Khan Academy bought them. They always had a few free ones. And then some of them were, you couldn't do much on it without uh, in app purchases. And then Khan Academy bought them. And it's my go-to one when I get little kids here, preschoolers, or even some of the older ones, uh, uh, you know, first, second grade. But um, I don't like the introduction because it's really loud. Dog, dog, moose. And, you know, <laughs> Uh, and I don't know that you can turn it off. You know, some of them you can hit skip the intro, uh -huh. but I don't know of a way to do that with Duck, Duck, Moose. Let's do Duck, Duck, Moose. It's yeah. Moose. M-O-O-S-E. Oh, Moose. Moose. Duck, Duck, Moose. Got it. Yeah. There's a lot more apps for iOS devices than there are for Android, but the one I want to feature is actually... Um, one that uh, they have a Chromebook, you know, Android, they have uh, the Chromebook version and iOS. So, I mean, it's all the different mobile devices. You can't use it on a standard computer, but uh, Chromebook, there's a there's one. And they don't all have Chrome, not all of them have. Now, they're, the most is for the iOS and uh but, well, and, and Judy, while you get that up to share that, to show, because I mean, last time you and I talked about doing apps, is it worth it? Um, the, uh, your iPad connected perfectly, but I'm just looking at, you know, kind of going down memory lane here when we used to teach iOS apps all the time. Um, also, I know for the ESC, I install all of the apps on their iPads and Duck, Duck, Moose. There's a handful of Duck, Duck, Moose ones on there. But uh, <clears throat> the one that teachers were really crazy about was Chatter Picks. If you remember oh, that being crazy, the, the teachers. Yes. Yeah, they love the Chatter Picks. And that was kind of a, a late one that came in because most of it was for like math skills and literacy skills like we're talking about today. Yeah, I, I was just looking at the, the range of resources that Duck, Duck Moose has. And as you mentioned, it's in cooperation with Khan Academy. So I believe all of their resources are free now. It used to be something you had to pay for some of the better ones. But but now I believe they're all available free. And uh, it's really cool. that I mean, they've got uh, English language arts, literacy, of course, with, that we're talking about today. But they also have things in the arts, you know, music and 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 other areas as well that uh, just a fantastic set of resources uh, that you would be able to use. And it looks like at least most of them would be available for use on Chromebooks uh, as, as well as many of them uh, on other platforms as well, including iPads and other tablets. Okay, um, on the Duck, Duck, Moose website, you can see that, uh, the list of all the apps and some of the other ones are ones that would promote uh, early literacy, but I really like the Duck, Duck, Moose reading because it is available for all the different platforms, uh, including Chromebooks. And there's eight word and letter activities. And I think this would be most appropriate for preschoolers or kindergarten at the highest levels because it is uh, teaching phonics of the consonants, the short vowels. Uh, there was a comment, uh, it didn't get a five out of five, but people saying that it didn't have uh, consonant blends and they thought that was something that was more important. They just stressed just the individual letters and so forth. But um, there's a little video that one can watch uh, that uh, uh, on the kind of skills and, and activities that are shown in it. And one of the new things that um, it has is a way for parents or educators to track what the students have done, not exactly grade them, but just um, what their skill level is, it measures. And you can put in three students' names or three child's names. And that was a, another uh, criticism that it should allow a teacher to put in more than three. Um, but at least it's something that allows some kind of tracking um, of the activities and the responses the students give. So um, going back to, of course, my standard um, 
let's see, we're going to get out of the full screen here. Uh, Info Ohio's resources. Uh, I've never talked a lot about the um, age three to five. And for some reason, the uh, early learning portal, portal here does not have the duck, duck, moose reading, but um, I was always a fan of the duck, duck, moose. And we've talked about book flicks in the past, which is great for fiction and nonfiction pairs. And it uh, reads aloud, or you can turn that feature off. Um, and But the early learning portal has two parts that I want to stress today. The parent part um, has the read, write, talk, and sing, and they have activities. And some of them are actually ones from Duck, Duck, Moose, like the, the draw and tell. You can see the little swan there. That's the uh, duck, I guess. And it has other, and there's Starfall. But I know when I've used Starfall, there are in-app purchases. But the, the part that's free is really good, too. Teach Your Monster to Read attracted my attention. It's a website. So any device could use that, but you have to sign up with your email address. It is from the, I don't know how, it's us born or U, U.S. born foundation, which um, is uh, very well uh, thought of. And it has games and things. So I'm not going to go into it because I haven't set up my account yet, but this teacher monster to read look like uh, a great uh, activity to do which you find through this um, one and there's another word wagon which maybe that's one that your um, uh, twins might find valuable and of course the the world book early learning is a uh, info Ohio resource which has all kind of articles like uh, children's encyclopedia but besides the parents one um, going back to uh, the band three to six, the uh, early learning portal for educators portal has breaks it down into cognitive development, uh, physical well being. And then I went into the language and literacy, and it has some of the same ones as in the parent one with a few extra thrown in. Um, there's so many, I haven't had time to look at all of them, but it gives parents and teachers a good source of resources that are free. Some require accounts. That's the one thing. And that's one thing if you're in Ohio using the Info Ohio resources, you should not have to log in, even though if your school has a library, logging in will let this uh, person using it find out what is available in the library if they use um, the fetch is a kind of a nickname uh, or the uh, Info Ohio's uh, markets, a, a cataloging system that a lot of schools in Ohio use. There are other systems that would not show up, but if you do a search for resources, it's going to show your local library's resources if they do use that cataloging system. So in the, my district, I live in Lakota schools, does use that. So um, you would be able to find out what is in the library. So Yeah, and, and Judy, I just wanted, you know, nobody likes talking very much about security and data privacy and everything, but it's something that we do have to think about. And I know the Duck, Duck, Goose, as well as the Info Ohio resources mm -hmm. uh, is very well rated. It, it's very good in terms of student privacy and being in compliance with HIP and all of the, of the other uh, data security. It doesn't share data with third parties. You're not going to end up getting a bunch of ads based on uh, your use of the duck, duck goose resources and so forth. So uh, an, an important consideration that we really should keep in mind as we're selecting uh, tools for the classroom and student use. Exactly. It's you know super safe. Very, very few ads. Some of these early learning portal uh, resources do have advertisements. I mean, they, uh, but they, you're going outside the Info Ohio uh, circle. But the highlights, I have been seeing so much lately on highlights on my Facebook, trying to get parents to, or grandparents to subscribe to their monthly or whatever it is publication. But this is free and it's an awesome resource. 
and has been around since I was in school. I mean, that tells you how old highlights uh, the company. And it is an Ohio company. I have not researched to find out if it's totally in Ohio now, but uh, the student can click a topic or click all the topics if they want to, to find out all the stories that um, uh, are in this collection of highlights. So. Um, which is, which for those of you that don't know, basically it's a online magazine designed for kids, a very fun, very educational one. It's right. been around for years and years and, and we're, we're very honored, you know, uh, fortunate that it's another resource available to Ohio students, Ohio parents, Ohio teachers uh, through Info Ohio, and just fantastic that um, they that got home. Available to us at no charge. Boxes, Sorry. colorful paper. It okay, they can have it read aloud to them. They can annotate it, uh, speed it up, whatever. But highlights still does have print materials because my grandsons. Uh, inherited some from some relatives that they have print materials because there still are parents that want kids to touch something besides a device. And so, uh, but of course, all of the Info Ohio resources are digital. Uh, so they, you know, you do need an info, uh, a Wi Fi connection of some kind to, or a cell phone to get those signals to, to get to the resources. Although there are quite a few that can be downloaded. I don't think the highlights is one of those, but um, but just looking at the three to five also has World Book Kids, World Book Early Learning, which are encyclopedias at um, videos, eBooks and so forth. So that's- You know, this is just kind of a funny incident. I, I, It's worth sharing, I think, how things that when we're a child, a very young learner perhaps can influence our entire lives. I, I remember reading highlights as, as an elementary student. Yeah. And there's an I, article I, I, about a ship, a research ship called the Ship That Flips. I mean, this was many years ago and I was in San Diego for a conference and my gosh, there in the harbor available for tours was the ship I had read about as a young child. It was just like, oh, cool. But that had stuck with me. That article that I saw in uh, Highlights magazine many years ago um, throughout my entire life, it helped me get interested in science, which I eventually became a science teacher. So um, you never know what an impact uh, having a young person read a story about uh uh, about anything, about a career, about boats, about a day at the zoo. Uh, you, you never know how that's going to eventually influence their their uh, lifelong learning. So a great set of resources. Right. Yeah, and I'm just going to add on here. I'm going to share something very quickly okay. because we're running out awesome. of time here. Um, basically, let me see. Um, we probably could have started with this one. I like what you said with your resources there, Judy. There's two things I'm going to point out. Um, one, sometimes parents don't know what the student's issue is, and, and possibly teachers aren't going to, most of them are going to have the opportunity to say, this is the focus that your child should be uh, leaning towards. But here, I found this website, Reading Rockets, and I'm going to include this on our resource link. Um, it has like a little questionnaire here where you you hit let's go and then it asks the parent, this is specifically for the parents, to go through and try to target the problem, try to figure out what tools from this website or other websites or from Info Ohio, when you go to the Info Ohio 3 to 5, you can find specifically the resources that target that area. So is it phonological and phonetic? Is it word decoding and phonics, vocabulary, fluency, uh, comprehension? And so basically they're going to target that problem um, based on how the student would walk through that. And I'm going to include that link, like I said, on our resource page. Um, a couple other things I wanted to point out. You had said in um, when you went to the parent page, it had, and this is the parent page for PBS Kids, um, my area that I'm in is WGTE. Of course, you would select your PB, uh, PBS 
um, area. I might have said PBIS earlier. Sorry, that's kind of on my brain. Um, but you had already had these milestone topics within Info Ohio, um, emotional and self-awareness, social skills. And then you have, of course, your science, your math, your literacy. And literacy is kind of the focus of what we're doing today. But the um, website that I'm giving you, the link I'm giving you here, parent resources to use with your child um, that uh, focus on these milestones, these topic areas um, specifically. So you could go and, you know, find the target. What's the problem? You could use the resources, <clears throat> excuse me, included on this Reading Rockets page, but you also could um, focus on whatever that um, area of focus that's needed for your child uh, through PBS Kids or um, on infoohio.org, the early literacy, um, early literacy, early learning uh, portion of infoohio.org that uh, Judy, you had shared at the beginning there. So a lot of great resources. And again, um, all these resources that we've come up with are um, felt were valuable from our perspective based on our experiences, uh, Judy with her grandchildren and and um, I with my children, um, since they were little, we've been using resources like this and they only keep getting better. Um, the um, book flicks that Judy mentioned earlier, when my son was four, he's 17 now, my oldest son, he, um, that was something we used. We used book flicks when he was four. Uh, so I think, I mean, that's. Well, yeah, I mean, it's grandparents that don't have books or, just friends that want to read to students and they think, well, I don't have any books. I'll just give them my, my uh, phone to use or my iPad or whatever. If they know all these, of, you know, if parents, we need to spread the word about all these online resources. I don't know how you, you know, to stress to teachers to, and administrators to let parents know about these. Because in my experience, a lot of parents have no idea about Info Ohio because it was just in the opening stages when they were in school, or maybe not, a, you know, it, it didn't start till 1998. So we need to let them know because there's so many of them, I'll say, do you know about Info Ohio to people my age, grandparents, they have no idea. And we need to spread the word any way we can. And libraries are doing a great job if people go in person to libraries, the uh, staff at li public libraries are telling people about Info Ohio, I have no doubt. And same thing with schools, but there are a lot of schools that don't have media specialists anymore. And so if parent, if teachers are educated about it and they don't have time to always use it in their classroom as much as we would hope, they can let the parents know um, about Info Ohio because instead of just letting the kids roam freely, like Roger said, it's not safe to roam the internet freely for elementary students. It's, it's you know, bad things are out there. So. True, true. And I was fortunate to be a part of NWAT to learn all these things to help guide my, my children since, you know, like I said, um, you know, I've been here for 20 years. I have a 17 year old. I've been able to utilize the resources that we have been sharing with school districts for years with my own children and watch how they've developed and improved and, and, um, you know, moved through these resources to develop some strong skills in reading, math, um, you know, social, emotional, those kind of things. Um, these, all these resources, all these links are going to be available for you as a teacher or as a parent or whomever's watching these videos um, on our link right there that's on the screen right now. And basically, uh, you know, teachers could put these on their Google Classroom, their Schoology, their Edmodo, whatever interface they're using, Seesaw to communicate with their parents. Um, my boys' school, they, you know, send links home for games and that kind of stuff through uh, Seesaw. Um, you could use whatever interface you're using to give information to the students and or the parents. But again, make sure that we're allowing them to navigate safely and securely. 
um, in order to move forward successfully in whatever skills that they need. So uh, Judy, thank you again for some wonderful resources. And um, we will be back with you next week on uh, talking about another integration technology tactic that you can utilize in your classroom or send home to your parents and your students in at their home. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. Thank you.